Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great week. This is something I recorded a long time ago, but I thought I would share now. The reason I didn't show you before is because it features my hands, which as you know are usually gloved up. But I was looking at the results the other day and I was thinking, it's not that terrible. And because Baldur's Gate 3 just came out, I, I don't know, it kind of made me want to show you this little uh, homage I made for Jester Lavor, the character from Critical Role. And it's also the first time I try a Playmobil for custom. So, I want to tell you about the character while the Playmobil, or this Playmobil model, and the materials. I will start by the end <laughs> and mention that the main material for this project is going to be green stuff. We have used green stuff, but usually for smaller like pieces of pony projects. However, in this case, uh, especially for this part that I want to create the clothes, and it's something that is very flexible, easy to work with, extremely uh, sticky. <laughs> of course not, I didn't know that, <laughs> I didn't realize. I think this is actually the first time I used green stuff, because I recorded this, uh, I think, two years ago, actually, because I wasn't in this house. Interesting. Anyway, my partner had suggested green stuff and I had seen some of the things he can do with his Warhammer minis and I thought, oh, this is so cool, I can do this too, of course. <laughs> it takes a lot of skill to make green stuff look good. But I thought I would show you anyway, as you know, I like showing you what not to do so you can be better. But hopefully you will understand that because this was made a long time ago, uh, my nails were not ready for the camera and also the takes are not good, although, as you know, <laughs> Focus is not something I have mastered yet. But in any case, <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit more about the character and the Playmobil. Which one should I do first? Uh, let's do the Playmobil first. As I showed in the beginning, the base for this project is the Playmobil Friends 70857 or the Harpist, is that how you say it? And the best news <laughs> is that it's about £2.50, I guess $3. Um, and it already has the dress for Jester, so I thought it could be a very helpful start <laughs> for Jester. Luckily, fabric behaves in weird ways, so the result so far could be worse. Now, Playmobil. Why Playmobil? Why not Playmobil? <laughs> I love Playmobil. Um, when I was little, I used to play Playmobil with my best friend at the time, who was a boy from my neighborhood called Pablo. He had all of them. I think I had one or two, but he was quite nice about it. He would let me play with them too, and we will spend like entire afternoons and evenings creating all these scenarios. Now, what's interesting, I think, <laughs> I find it interesting, is that we were about five years old, because this was before primary school, and I remember these conversations about what we wanted to do when we grew up. He wanted to be a paleontologist, so study dinosaurs, and I wanted to be an archaeologist, study humans. <laughs> Funnily enough, we both actually did what we said we would do. <laughs> we, he's, he is now a paleontologist. I am an anthropologist who does YouTube and uses <laughs> pony restoration videos to talk about Minoans and Egyptians and all the things that I always found fascinating. But going back, <laughs> I have amazing memories of playing with the Playmobiles and I haven't actually owned any in a long time. I think I bought some of those like knight medieval sets a few years ago, but I, I store them when I moved and I haven't seen them in a while. I have to look for them. But anyway, this was the perfect excuse to look at Playmobiles again. Okay, so we have covered Playmobiles, my childhood and green stuff. Let's now talk about Jester Labor and Critical Role and Dungeons and Dragons. As you might know, Baldur's Gate 3 just came out. Now, Baldur's Gate 2, the previous one, had come out uh, 23 years ago. <laughs> and I have been waiting each of those <laughs> years to play this one. So if you want to see the game with me for the first time, I will be uploading a video, a playthrough, uh, I think a character creation video on my gaming channel, which you can find in the description and everywhere because I'm <laughs> trying to promote it because I don't mind playing it on my own, but it's nice to share. All the Baldur's Gate took place in the Forgotten Realm setting, which is a D&D setting. This one actually follows the, the, the rules for 5th edition. Now, I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you are familiar with at least some of D&D. Please let me know if this is not the case. I'll be happy to explain in the comments, actually, <laughs> because I'm going to evangelize anyone <laughs> who wants to play D&D. But now let me tell you about my journey. 
I'll make it short because I want to <laughs> make more videos and talk about this. So, I used to play uh, role-playing games a long time ago when I was a teenager and we, we used to play um, Middle Earth in the Tolkien Association in Argentina. Amazing days! <laughs> and then I didn't get a chance to play much until very recently when I found a group of the most amazing people and the most amazing DM, Mandy, who I'm so grateful for. But until then, my dose of D&D came from Critical Role. Now, if you haven't heard of Critical Role, it's a web series where voice actors play Dungeons and & Dragons and it has been streaming for a while. There are three seasons, but my favorite is season two because that's the one that I watched the most with John. I should say he introduced me to it. <laughs> and my favorite character from that season is Jester. So let's talk a little bit about Jester. She is one of the clerics of the Mighty Nine party. She is played by goddess voice actress Laura Bailey. Praise be. And she is the daughter of the famed Ruby of the Sea. And also a tiefling and a follower of the Traveler. If none of these things make any sense, don't worry. <laughs> I suggest you take a look at the series. Actually, uh, if you have heard of Vox Machina on like Amazon Prime, that's the season one of Critical Role. It's an adaptation of the game they play. And they're going to make a season two. So if you don't want to watch the, the, the Dungeons and Dragons campaign, then you can wait for that show. Now, Jester is my favorite character from this season. She is, well, she's amazing. <laughs> she is funny, she's loyal, she's a little mischievous, <laughs> but she's really good at drawing, especially some things in random places. And I think, in a way, Laura Bailey taught me how to be a little happier through Jester. Okay, so I was actually editing the video and I realized it's going to be much longer than I expected. I didn't remember I had recorded so many things. So I'm going to leave you with some music now. And as usual, I will also add a list with all the materials I used uh, down in the video description. And I will add some comments here and there explaining the process. But for now, since this is the millipod part and then there will be lots of painting, I'll let you enjoy, hopefully, <laughs> the process. So I'll see you soon. A quick note about some of these accessories. I didn't want to do something completely realistic because that will take a lot of detail and skill. <laughs> so instead I simplified a lot of uh, Laura's um, gestures attire to make it fit more the Playmobil style. This is not an excuse, wink wink.
I will gift you a rare moment of self-love and confess that I actually really like the way the hair looks in the end. Um, I used lots of very thin threads and I guess it is Jester's um, fault or blessing that her hair is quite nice to sculpt. And honestly, green stuff is perfect to do this. So if I have to do another project, maybe the rest of the 99 or some other critical role, oops, I almost killed my plant with my enthusiastic hands, then I will definitely use this material because it's once you kind of get the gist of it, it's very, very fun to work with. And now it's time to paint. The first thing I'm going to do is just apply a primer. So it's all a uniform white color, grayish color. And then I'm going to use acrylic paints to paint on top. The reason I don't show this part is because I have to do it in the garden. But here is the result. And now with the primer, it gets much, much easier to paint.
And finally, here's the before and here is the after. Like I said, I wasn't going to show you this project, but then I figured, well, why not? <laughs> it was an early attempt and you can also learn a little bit about the green stuff and what not to do. The, the size of this makes every single detail very visible, but I was quite happy when I finished it. It was, it was fun. It was fun to make and I think that's important. <laughs> So I definitely encourage you to try this material, to watch Critical Role, and to definitely play D&D. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!